Hey guys! So Greenland is the largest island on our planet. What do we know about it? First, it's one of two Viking mistakes. Only savage bearded men could call a land full of greenery Iceland and the Ice Kingdom Greenland. Millennia-old glaciers cover the entire island but are melting slowly. This means huge pieces of ice slide into the ocean and break apart, forming icebergs. They can be as tall as a 40-story building and up to 25 miles long in Greenland. This harsh northern beauty is charming, especially if you're not used to it. Greenland has no trees. The cold desert landscape is broken apart by colorful wooden buildings. They're cute and look like outhouses and are on raised platforms to avoid snowdrifts. The island's tiny cities look like toy ones. The Ice Kingdom's magical transformation occurs in the summer, when Greenland turns into a blooming, fragrant island full of flowers under the blue sky. Greenland is to the northeast of North America and is mostly in the Arctic Circle. It is politically inclined to Europe since it is part of Denmark, along with other smaller surrounding islands. Although Greenland is part of Denmark, it was given autonomy in 1979 and even more autonomy in 2009, which makes it independent with formal ties to Denmark. Copenhagen is still responsible for its foreign affairs and is a source of investment. Greenland is famous for its fishing industry, which makes up 90% of its export. But there's enough fish in the world. So why are people getting interested in Greenland now? Why could global warming be a gold rush for Greenland? As of the end of the last century, the Greenland Ice Shield, which occupies about 80% of the territory, made it almost impossible to do any geological surveying. For example, from 1990 to 92, as part of the Greenland Ice Core project, a hole was drilled 10,000 feet through the ice to reach the base of the ice shield. The researchers found that the average thickness is 5,000 feet. This is even more impressive because global warming has been doing its work for over 100 years and slowly melting the ice in the north. This resulted in the centuries-old ice shield being estimated at 700,000 cubic miles. Greenland's glaciers provide about 17% of the world's annual 3 millimeter water level increase. From 1996 to 2006, the glacier melting rate increased from 12 cubic miles per year to 36. To make the scale easier to understand, Picture that instead of the millimeters the water level is rising now, those 10 years led to 23 feet of increase, which threatened to drown entire island nations. Since 2003, Greenland's glaciers have added at least 3.5 trillion tons of water to the world ocean. Every world organization affected including the UN, is asking this question, what do we do? The only member of these communities who isn't rushing to solve it is Greenland. So, is what we see the crazy, short-sighted approach of an autonomous government or a strategic game? See, global warming made entire areas accessible for geological research. Additionally, the oil reserves on the western coast amount to about 17 billion barrels, with another 32 billion in the east. Naturally, scientists expected to find these on land, but such impressive successes were unimaginable. Let's look at southern Greenland, at the town of Narsak. There are not even enough people there to call it a village. About 1,200 people live in classic A-frame buildings. The surrounding mountains potentially contain up to 25% of the world's rare earth metals. 
The elements include terbium, cerium, lanthanum, and praseodymium, which is the platinum of the century. They are used in everything high-tech from smartphones to nuclear reactors. Whoever controls these metals controls the world of information technology. Naturally, the one who has the resource and allows it to be mined would receive immense profits. Almost 40 million tons of rare earth metals are waiting for their time in Greenland. It's an enormous number. If you consider that the total number of raw resources in the world excluding Greenland is just 120 million tons, then the amount of future profit would astound even the most hardened skeptic. In the past, the call to mine resources was held by the U.S., but now its main competitor has long since passed them, and now the U.S. depends on China. That's why it's possible that Donald Trump proposed the insane idea to buy the entire island during his presidency. The giant frozen island is just a load on Denmark, demanding extra expenses. But for the U.S., who already has had a military base there since the Cold War, it would be useful. However, he was denied. It's not just a big piece of land, but a home for 60,000 people. Additionally, the argument that Greenland is a parasite for the Danes is also false. It is true that Greenland is subsidized by about $640 million a year, but that's not even 0.5% of Denmark's expense budget. Nevertheless, the increased interest in the island was founded. A business shark's nose is never wrong. His idea and desire to be written into history alongside Johnson and Jefferson who added Alaska and Louisiana to the U.S., also played a role. The Trump administration was able to ground their crazy proposal, which made it clear that the 45th president wasn't crazy. He was just playing a rude but planned game. The Chinese passed their competition at a corner in the economic race, by obtaining 12% of the share of a different mining location called Kvenfeld. China is doing well in this race, but they have enough industrial power and can provide a higher demand. Additionally, the annual demand for rare earth elements makes up 200,000 tons a year, and several mines can give their owners 87% of it. This means that there is almost a monopoly on mining and selling these valuable resources. European governments are joining the race against China. But the U.S. is becoming a serious competitor. Meanwhile, Greenlanders are enjoying the competition between these world powers, which has increased the price on rare earth metals by 20% due to the economic war. Greenland's government is delighted that their island is getting so much attention. Researchers are discovering more and more new sites that even the locals didn't suspect. Iron, zinc, gems, and local uranium veins are considered some of the largest in the world. There's just one source in Gvenfeld that reaches 228,000 tons of ore. And it's all waiting until a focused player on the world market comes and takes their prize. Many people are surprised because these rare earth metals are in other countries. So why is everyone watching Greenland's frozen fjords? For time and eternity, merchants have looked for both goods to sell as well the route that will provide the most comfortable and accessible logistics. This happened to Greenland as well, which became a key point in the possible northwestern route in the 16th to 19th centuries. The Northern Sea Route provided most of the demands for the local trade, and economic routes in absence of something better, since the icebreakers weren't affordable by everyone. The recent interest in the Northern Passage never died out, is the difference between the depth of the Panama Canal and the Northern Passage. The second can allow much larger ships through. In 1969, 
The first heavy supertanker, the SS Manhattan, with a displacement of 115,000 tons and 43,000 horsepower, easily went through the new route and was, at the time, the largest ship in the U.S. civilian navy. In 1985, the U.S. Coast Guard icebreaker Polar Sea went through the northern passage from American Air Base in Tula, Greenland, to a port in Seattle. Now that global warming is making its changes, the icebreakers aren't as necessary. And world trade is welcoming new players like Canada and Australia, as well as EU countries. This route will now have a full-fledged port that can offer logistics at a very affordable price, as said by Greenland's government. The island's autonomy lets it make decisions without Denmark's approval. But Denmark has had no qualms with Greenland's accelerated development, and has announced that Greenland will never belong to anyone other than Greenland. So, Greenland has seen newfound success, and the world economy is receiving new valuable resources for development. Well, that's all for today. Leave a like and a comment, let me know what you learned, and does this change your opinion on global warming? And we'll see you next time.